have with us Vishal Gondal out here and uh, for those of you that aren't aware of who he is, why don't you just give them a little brief. Well, uh, I'm Vishal, founder and CEO of India Games. Uh, India's possibly the first Indian games company which I started way back in 1998. Have been associated with the gaming world for several years. Uh, we in fact used to do a lot of gaming tournaments and uh, we ended up selling India Games to Disney and I'm here now. Okay. talking to you. So can you tell us what's happening here? Why are you here and what's this occasion where we have an arena full of gamers with us? I think uh, today is a very historic day in the games world uh, because while we know gaming has been popular, every kid, every person with a mobile phone, every person with a PC is playing games. The problem was it did lack the funding and the backing it required like any other sport to be mainstream and successful. Uh, today we have Mountain Dew, one of possibly India's biggest brand, uh, getting Rithik Roshan, the biggest movie star, to go after gaming. And they have taken the baton forward to promote esports and gaming championships in India, uh, even recognize the gamers, put them on the bottle, and make sure that they get them the recognition and the uh, the respect they need for being gamers. Yeah. Today, if you're a gamer, your family is saying you're wasting your time, your friends think what are you doing. Clearly, because it is, it is still considered a waste of time, not a career. Today, while in other countries, you could be a professional gamer and you could be getting endorsements, you could be getting uh, companies sponsoring you and so on. It's not happened in India yet. Would that or is this a platform? Because ESL has existed in India for a while now. So do you think that uh, that taboo, of course, it's lifting gradually, but do you think that entire celebrity value will come to a game See, or something? that is what soon? is required, right? If you look at the sports which have become big now, if you look at what is happening with IPL or what is happening with Kabaddi or what is happening with soccer now, the reason they are getting mainstream is because big brands are coming and backing it. Okay. So clearly you require the brands uh, to come in and consumer brands who understand this and I think today that's exactly what is happening and with the kind of commitment they have from a funding perspective and what they are planning to do at a national scale it has never ever happened before so while ESL existed and before that we used to organize yeah. World Cyber Games which yeah. is also very big but we never had the budgets we never had the, uh, the resources to make it mainstream and I believe this is going to make it mainstream. I mean, come on. We have Hrithik Roshan advertising gaming on, on television. When, but when did that happen? To make it mainstream, now one of the, of course, question comes uh, is with affordability. Each of the consoles, when they launched, were close to 50,000 rupees each. So and even And even the PCs. I mean, even if you look at building a dedicated rig, you need a 40, 50,000 rupee budget to have something that can play a modern game that launches. So what do you think about the pricing of consoles and PCs today where, uh, considering the average gamer who's living in the average household today? So it is like saying that if you want to be a professional cricketer, you uh, need to buy you? an expensive bat, yeah. hmm. you need to buy expensive gear, you yeah. need to train yeah. like an athlete. And definitely that's a lot expensive. Similarly, if you want to take this as a sport, if you are serious about it, you would make all those investments. Yeah. If you're not serious, you could play it on your mobile, you could play it on a, in a LAN parlor. So, Remember, this is not casual gaming, this is pro gaming. Yeah. These, the people here are pros and pros are expected to invest in their gear. So okay. it is not, we are not saying that an average person can do this. Okay. This is not for the average person, but the average person can aspire to be this. It's like saying that can every person who plays Gali cricket become Tendulkar or Virat Kohli? They can if they are and then if they are practicing and they're getting recognized, they're going to get funding, they're going to buy expensive gear and so on. So it's it's a process. Okay. Uh, coming to the development scene in India, I mean globally we've seen uh, game developers pop up from all corners of the world. But in India, even though you have 
Ubisoft and a lot of houses here, nothing mainstream comes out. You have a little art, uh, Luxury Studios, for example, is there in Gurgaon that does art for some great games and stuff, but no core game development coming out of India. What's your opinion on that? I think, uh, again, the challenge was funding and budgets. Uh, the problem is the gaming world, unlike Bollywood, where people understand Bollywood movies and they can understand lower quality. Mm -hmm. But in the gaming world, people are comparing your game to Forza and people are comparing your game to Call of Duty. Yeah. So you need to meet those quality standards. Okay. And those games were built with hundreds of millions of dollars in funding. Yeah. So I would say that the quality level Indian, the Indian studios are reaching there. It is the funding. Uh, and I think that's going to change. So you are going to see a lot of that happening. Too. Anything on the educational front, because there are a lot of institutes internationally that you've seen that have dedicated courses for game development, which essentially helps them give a small platform or even a foot in the door opportunities DSK, through game so there's testing. DSK, there's DSK in Pune, and there are many courses which are coming up. So I don't think so. The problem is about trained people. Okay. I think the problem is really about the funding and the budgets required to make the quality required. Also, uh, speaking from an IP perspective, a lot of mobile game developers also focus on uh, something that's always popular. It's either to do with cricket or a game based on a film and it's usually on the mobile. Do you see that diversifying in the future? Because if you look at game development even on mobile, uh, on a global perspective, uh, there is a lot of variety, but majority of gamers in India or people who want to snag the big market will go for cricket or something that's popular. Do you see anything? Really, if you're looking at gaming in India, you need to look at what is popular here. Yeah. So in India, nobody's going to play baseball. Yeah. So you have to make cricket. So if you are looking at the Indian gamer, you have to look beyond the metro cities. Okay. So if you look at somebody in a smaller city or a village or in a Ranchi, in a, uh, you know, in a Rishikesh or in a Nainital, for them who are having their mobile phones, they are more likely to relate with cricket or Bollywood yeah. uh, than playing another game. So clearly there is a market for this and you will be seeing more development. My issue is not the content but the quality of the content. Okay. So today, that was going to be my next question. if you create a Bollywood game, it has to be equal to a Spider-Man or any other game you are playing. Yeah. Or if you are playing cricket, the quality needs to be equal to FIFA. Yeah. Only then people are going to take it. Absolutely. So I think what you really need is people focusing on the quality part of it and I'm, I'm hopeful it's going to happen. Okay, my last few questions. Uh, the first one is, of course, are you a PC gamer or a console gamer? Uh, well, I am a console gamer. Oh, which one? Sony or Mike? On the Xbox. Ah, okay, fine. Um, and uh, my next question for you is, uh, E3 is happening next week. Uh, so even if this goes out a little after that, we're going to say this was shot pre-E3. Uh, your top three predictions for E3. What would you like to see? Virtual reality, virtual reality, augmented reality, virtual reality, virtual reality. I think the entire market is looking at VR. Okay. Billions and billions of dollars have been invested. Microsoft HoloLens, Magic Leap, Oculus, uh, and you know all the other startups together. Yeah. And the number one business and market the VR and AR companies are going to go after is gaming. Okay. So what you're going to see E3 is everybody walking in headsets. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, they're going to probably crash into each other. But it's going to be exciting. All right. Now, since you've come from the whole game development, a very hardcore gaming professional background, uh, any message to the guys who are watching this, who are aspiring to get into the business of gaming, any message you have? So all I can say is that I'll be soon starting funding these gaming companies. Okay. I'm in the process of putting together something. So, so if that's someone uh, that's going to be developing yeah. a game, you better watch out. Your next funding could come from right here. But yeah, okay. Uh, so I would say that part of the problem in the gaming business was not enough funding. Okay. And I'm trying to figure out a way to sort that problem. So can we see the next AAA game for the consoles and PC pop out? Console may not be still India because the market is not just there. I would say uh, mobile is a big space and I'm excited about the AR and VR space. So I think if you can focus on AR, VR uh, and the gaming space, you may have a hit, hit formula with you. All right, that was great. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. This was a pleasure.